now we find ourselves poised upon the precipice of an apocalypse, entering into an ending, let's bow back to the beginning. Let's genuflect to the Genesis and ask our ancestors' ancestors who birthed this all into being. Before we were single cells in a primordial soup, the soup itself is a singular ideal in the ethereal ethers, an Akashic abyss of pre-existence. Akasha was empty then, without record of a single sunrise or firefly. Our medicine men and wise women call it the chaos of creation, but it was far from chaotic. It was supremely peaceful, in fact, perfectly fluid and profoundly free. There was not the existent nor the non-existent then, and darkness was hidden by darkness. Silence was heard only by silence, and even the oceanic ethers were still, before life within the lightless depth, absorbed within the fullness of emptiness, without form and void, until, suddenly, and all at once, in an instant which lasted an eternity, you can feel it unfolding even now, a blink, a twitch, a precosmic shudder of shocking electricity pulsed through the bodiless body a shaft of etheric electric ecstasy, an erratic lightning bolt of oceanic orgasm, the first and final pleasure, the primordial source and substance, a sudden and perpetual sweetness, Amrita in the mist, the primeval vortexing vibration. In an instant, which stretches into now and beyond, the eyeless opened its eyes, felt its bodiless body, and entirely by happy accident, spontaneously squirted our liquid cosmos to life. Now, let's be clear about this universe. It is not empty space. It flows like water, my friend, cosmic and subatomic, infinite orbits spinning like eddies in a whirlpool. 70% of the energy that fuels this divine dance of myth, matter, and mystery is dark energy. What physicists call the energy of the vacuum, the zero point field, what our grandmother's grandmothers called ether or akasha. And physicists say it's wavy like a fluid. It spirals the galaxies into motion. It is uniform across all of space and time, an ocean of energy that animates all. In each light-filled moment of creation, some electric bliss zaps from the primordial etheric waters through a vortex, spiraling all slippery from formless into form. By the creative dance of Fibonacci spirals until it meets the physical cosmic waters of creation. From metaphysical to physical, Electricity carries the waters above into the waters below, so suddenly 3D, so supremely source and substance. Now there is a reason why every single planet-sized body discovered by Hubble is known or suspected to have water. There is a reason why ice makes up more than half of all the condensed matter in our outer solar system. There is a reason why hydrogen, which is Latin for water creator, makes up 70% of the atomic mass in the universe. 70% of the energy of our universe is what our ancestors called the waters of chaos. 70% of the earth is an ocean. There is a reason why 70% of your body is water. My friend, you are not just particle, you are wave, and even your waves are swimming within waves. There is a reason, but only water knows why. There is a force of consciousness that swims this universe with electric sparks, seeding water and electromagnetism, the integral ingredients of life, into every quiet corner of the cosmos. I suspect there's a reason why the cosmic clouds, the nebula nursery where stars are born, contain enough water to fill the Earth's oceans 10 million times. Water both mothers and midwives the creation of all stars and then lives within their bright burning bellies as superionic amorphous ice, as the liquid life force that flows inside the sun's flames, but only water could tell you how. Perhaps it's through the vortexes that turn waves into particles that the unmanifested waters of the absolute become the manifested waters of life, but only the water inside your body could tell you what's true. Then, because of this wise and wild living liquid inside a star, because of water's primal drive towards life, its divine desire to live, the first atoms of carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen came together inside a star to form the first organic molecules required for biological bodies. The same atoms inside your eyes and toes and mind and nose. Yeah, I thought I saw something stellar in you. When elderly supergiants, the grandmothers of galaxies, decide to die, they expel millions of metric tons of water in a stellar gushing geyser of celestial amrita, a cosmic climax after eons of foreplay between water and light. But the universe never changes its sheets. It just cycles that star water through the cyclical circular spiral of whirling orbits until it makes its way, finally, into your body, 
my dear, I thought I saw something stellar in you. It could be the ancient baptism of the earth's own blood that spirals through your spinal column, twisted by the vortices in your vertebrae. It could be the rushing, gushing river that spins in your spiral striated veins. Your blood does not merely flow, my dear. It spirals like a Sufi, whirling a dance that weaves you to divinity. You son of water-bearing sons, you daughter of divine waters. There is a reason for all of this. You could ask the water, who speaks through the electromagnetic rays, waves, and radiation informing your neural firing, and in the cell membranes of your own body, which carry charges up to 10,000 volts, the force of an entire lightning bolt happening within you a million times per moment in membranes only microns thick. You, my aquatic electric love, are positively humming with energy. I could sense it when I saw you. And those vortexes of ether becoming water are still reeling with elation, still thrilling with the magic of creation, even inside you. Water knows, feels, and remembers. She remembers when she was Akashic Ether, and she can take your awareness there. Water remembers hurtling through the heavens, and she can teach you the secrets of stars if you learn to listen. She is the sensory organ of the universe. Do you think it's a coincidence that 99.92% of the molecules in your beautiful body are water? You are pulsed alive by the electrostatic love-making of hydrogen and oxygen. Water's simplicity belies infinite mystery. She gives rise to all other elements, creatrix and sustainer, omnipresent, yet ever forgotten. She is you, yet treated like a commonplace commodity, inanimate and inconsequential. She is the mediator between heaven and earth, the messenger between the human and the divine, the medium between the physical and the etheric, the perceptible form of the imperceptible, the physical body of life force itself, animation by vibration. She is every movement, every change. She is the healer of the sick and the restorer of deadened landscapes and deadened spirits. Schwenk said, renouncing any form of her own, she becomes the creative matrix for form and everything else. Renouncing any life of her own, she becomes the primal substance of all life. Renouncing material fixity, she becomes the implementer of material change. Renouncing any rhythm of her own, she becomes the progenitor of all rhythm elsewhere. Our bodies come from the ocean and will return to the sea. We are bodies of water in which water pools along her journey like lakes between tributaries. You are a shape-shifted form of liquid versatility, a way that water has adapted to walk instead of flow. Thich Nhat Hanh said, I only know that I was once a cloud because I am still a cloud. Remember this, my aquatic friend, and never forget the waters inside you are the same as the waters outside you. The only difference is that the water within you has crystallized into H3O2 prisms, into structured hydrogen-bonded matrices of conductivity. This water is alive. It is a crystal. It is a living liquid crystal mirror through which the cosmic light is projected, the prism through which the holographic spectrum of existence is shined into being. As the Kogi of Columbia say, Within water is the metaphysical blueprint, the map of reality, all worlds of reality, from dreams to the structures of daily life to psychic visions within medicine journeys, all are maintained by water. So pause for a pulse now and let yourself swim through your veins. Well and swell yourself within your own heart, gush up your spine, spill into your pineal ventricles, conduct the sparks of light between your synapses, crystallize in your glands, resonate like cymatic waves in the cerebrospinal seas of vertebral vortices. Shine the light of your awareness through the crystalline structures of the water within you, casting prismatic presence into the rhythmic rolling waves of your life breath, the way each raindrop falling through the air is a prism for the spectrum of light. Now that we have destroyed the hydrological cycle, the waters who gave life have come to claim life. Rising seas, cyclones, and floods, the waters are here to wash away. The waters who give life come to claim life now that we have dehydrated our aquatic bodies, stealing our blood from the oceans and then poisoning them both. Now that we are so dry, we are cancerous and dying, inflamed and incendiary, the waters are here to wash away. At the end, we turn again to the beginning. In the apocalypse, we turn again to the ancestors. The ancients knew that creation wasn't something that happened once long ago. It is a process 
It is a moment. It is an experience. Now, the universe is constantly creating and recreating itself through the medium of water, our wise and wild living liquid life force. When we partner with water, we thrive. When we dishonor water, we die. I don't know why, but I know that if we can remember this, we might survive.